Welcome back. WSBA Morning News with Gary Sutton here on a Tuesday morning, and it is 7-18, and that means it's time for our Give Local York uh, interview. And with us this morning is Robin Rohrball, who's the president and CEO of the Community Progress Council, to talk a little bit about her group. Of course, the Give Local York uh, is leading up to the May 7th Big Give which is going to be 24 hours of giving. Last year we gave $3.5 million here from an area that loves to give and help out all these nonprofits, and and none more uh, useful right now than the CPC, the Community Progress Council. And with us is Robin to tell us more about it. Good morning, Robin. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you very much for having me this morning. Well, it's an honor to have you aboard this morning, an honor to also congratulate you on the great work that the Community Progress Council does right here in New York. But for a lot of people, you know, they hear about the CPC and they're not really sure what all they do. Tell us a little bit about what your organization does, Robin. Sure. Our mission is to empower families to move towards financial self-sufficiency. So what we're trying to do is help people get out of poverty and be able to sustain that uh, momentum forward. So we do that through an array of programs like Head Start, Early Head Start, Pre-K Counts, the Women, Infants, and Children Supplemental Nutrition Program. And right now, our, one of our busiest programs is our housing program, where we are um, distributing rent and utility assistance to people in York County who have been affected by COVID. You know, what? and, and here's maybe an interesting question to you. What causes poverty? I mean, you've probably studied this. You've, probably, you've seen it up close and personal, Robin. What causes poverty, and what is the best way to raise people up, you know, we always, we always say a, a rising tide lifts all boats. We want to lift all boats in this country. How do you, how do you do that? And obviously, some of these programs that you've mentioned are a great way to get that started. But how do you get people that self sufficiency? Because I think that's a very noble goal that you have. Thank you. Well, um, I think that the way we approach it is that uh, we go beyond some stopgap measures. So while we are offering rent and utility assistance right now to renters in your county who have been affected by COVID, our very strong desire is to continue working with those folks over a long period of time. Some people who are struggling financially right now are being affected by job loss and so on and so forth. Right. Um, and it won't be a sustainable poverty, but others who have lived in generational poverty um, we want to work uh, long term with those folks to make sure that um, if we can create some stability in their lives, they have the skills and the tools available to them um, to problem solve in the future and not find themselves back in poverty, which is unfortunately a, a very easy thing to do. Um, one uh, life event like a flat tire can really spiral someone's life out of control wow. and um, financially impact them. What I heard you say, and I think it's so important, is establishing relationships beyond just the giving of money. Money is important here, obviously, and we're talking about raising money here in your county. But establishing relationships with people and continuing that reinforcement seems to me to be one of your major goals. Am I reading too much into it here, Robin? Absolutely not. You got it uh, right on point. Our, our goal is to provide people with education and skills. Um, we do that through really focusing on employment and and adult education kinds of programs. And so, um, no, you you got it. That's that's the way to do it. Robin, let me ask you a question. Have, did you do you have? I'm sure you've had so many different situations that you've seen that you may have in your mind's eye. But can you name one that really kind of stands out to you? Where you saw someone go from poverty and, and the poverty of being dependent sometimes too to the to the wealth of being independent, to being self-sufficient, which you've talked about. Can you think of one example that kind of stands out to you? Well, there's there's not one example because there are so many. Um, right. I think the thing of it is um, it, it takes many, many years, and that's something that's really important for um, listeners to, to remember is that it is not a, a short-term program. It's not a real quick fix. Um, we have folks who have been enrolled in school for um, maybe 10 years trying to get their bachelor's degree or um, other kinds of certificates for, for better uh, employment. And during that, they may have life events that make them uh, make the decision to, to pause their education. So, um, yeah, we have lots of examples wow. of, of that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Just the way you said that 
brings it home to me because we think about, well, we go to college for four years or we do this for 12 years. And all of a sudden you're saying, here's someone who's maybe going to school trying to get a a bachelor's degree for 10 years or maybe someone trying to get a diploma. And in the meantime, they maybe are in a single parent family. Maybe they're just trying to make ends meet. Maybe they're working. Maybe they and every little thing is like another thing to pile onto all that. And that's really something that we don't, I think, appreciate as a total population sometimes that, that we run into those kind of things, right? Absolutely. That those are the kinds of things we see every day, all day in our organization. We have right now a, a family where the, the mother in the family is going for her bachelor's degree and she's got young children in our early education program. And when child care was not available to her, it really um, it, it threw for a loop. Um, fortunately, Community Progress Council was there to say, no, we'll help you pay for child care somewhere else because uh, uh, your regular program is not open. So it, it requires that sort of one-on-one attention and partnership yeah. with family, and that's what we're there for. Ladies and gentlemen, $25 to CPC through the Big Give will provide a gas card to help a participant get to work or class. $50 can purchase a professional attire for job interviews and employment, $100 subsidizes a month of food for a family who loses their benefits. $500 covers the cost of books or materials for a college course or job training. And $1,000 uh, class fees for a student taking a certified nurse assistant CNA course. Just to give you an example of what your money can do. Uh, CPC, Community Progress Council, please keep them uppermost in your mind when May 7th rolls around you have the chance to give money. There's a great place where it can go to that's helping people to become self-sufficient again. Robin, I can't tell you how much of an honor it's been to have you on this morning and hearing about what your great group is doing out there. Thank you very much. I appreciate your comment. Thank you. Robin Rohrball here. The Community Progress Council, please check them out. You can go to givelocalyork.org. Uh, just uh, push uh, search and you can get CPC and you'll find all about what they are doing. What a great group. We'll take a break. We'll come right back at 724 here on WSBA.